internal seals. Welcome to Building Knowledge 101. We will discuss the proper attention paid to critical internal seals and their impact on the performance of curtain wall systems. So summarizing real quick, let's make sure we choose the right system based upon the wind load, looking at all the zones on the project and ensuring we've called out proper positive and negative wind load. Second, make sure we're anchoring the system to the structure correctly and properly, allowing for movement. Now, third is looking at the interior seals inside the system, making sure all of those seals are done correctly. When you start going through the installation instructions for a curtain wall system, you're going to see lots of places, lots of places where silicone is required. No metal to metal joint is waterproof, no matter how square cut they are, no matter how tightly they're fastened. They're not waterproof, they're not airtight, they all have to be sealed. So within the insulation instruction, sealing joints is going to be called out wherever there's metal metal contact. And it's also very, very important that those surfaces are clean prior to using it. So your silicone manufacturer is going to call that out. Every surface has to be cleaned first, cleaned properly, and they're going to give a recommendation for what material they want the aluminum to be cleaned with so that their product will work once it's dried off. Here's an example of a horizontal to vertical joint. You can see we're using a joint plug because this is a pressure equalized curtain wall system. So once the joint plug is installed, we're going to seal all three sides of the joint plug, push it into the joint, and then seal on top of it. So you'd actually see more silicone being tooled up and down the joint here to kind of bevel this joint because water running down the curtain wall, you want it to hit this joint and flow out here on the horizontal. You don't want it to pass by. And you don't want air blowing through the system to be able to get around that. So this is here to block any air or water moving from this line of glass into the glass pocket around the line of glass below it. Now notice we've sealed over the fastener head here, and we're also going to seal up this joint here. So we're going to seal where this horizontal member meets the vertical because this is a wet area. Water is going to be in here. So all these possible places that water or air could get through the system have to be sealed correctly and then tool the sealant to make sure you have good adhesion to the aluminum surface. So then as you start building the curtain wall, installing more of it, each step of the installation is going to have notes in there about if it needs to be sealed, if it does, how to seal it. So that's going to be called out throughout. You can see all these joints where your pressure plates are meeting together. Those are married together with silicone, tying them together. You can see how it's called out right here, how it's to be done. Again, looking further through it with the splices, those are sealed. Then joint covers, everything coming together. All these joints have to be sealed. And again, no metal to metal joint is ever waterproof on its own. It has to be sealed. So if you take a look at this joint, Notice now, you can see a little bit of a crack there, and it could be that weight on the horizontal member caused it to crack a little bit. Could be it wasn't square, cut square. But either way, you can also see there's no sealant there because you can see into that joint. So that was not sealed. Now, in commercial buildings, any building, you're going to have high pressure on the outside, low pressure on the inside. And I mentioned that this is a wet area, so water is going to be here with this joint and negative pressure on the inside, this is what you're gonna to expect to happen next. When you introduce water to it, it's gonna to come to the inside. Negative air pressure on the inside or low pressure on the inside is gonna pull water through that joint. That's why it's so critical where that joint, where your metal metal contact pieces come together, those joints are all sealed correctly in accordance with the manufacturer's installation instructions. Now, something else you might not think is very exciting, but setting blocks. Every system has setting blocks designed specifically for that system, and glass fabricators want those placed two per daylight, not three, but two per daylight. They need to be four inches long and then located initially at quarter points, so one quarter of the way in from each light of glass to properly support the insulated glass unit. Because the frame here, the goal of the frame is to allow the glass to perform, so it's got to properly support the insulated glass units. Now, here is an example of someone who ran out of setting blocks. I'm not sure what happened, but it looks like they grabbed some pieces of plastic and they wrapped duct tape around them and stuck them in there to try to support the insulated glass unit. And you can see what happened. It bowed up into it. This unit failed because the setting block here pushed up into the spacer, bowed it in, the unit failed. So that is not the proper setting block. You want to make sure we're using the proper setting block. 
And I mentioned that typically setting blocks are going to be at quarter point. So that means if you look at these large lines of glass, we're going to put setting blocks at quarter points in from each end, so one quarter of the way in. Now, since this is a huge line of glass sitting on a slab, sitting on the sill, we're also going to shim underneath it, like I mentioned earlier. So we're fine there. But when you look at this big line of glass up here, we can't shim underneath it. And it's possible with that much weight, that horizontal is going to deflect. So instead of putting the setting blocks at quarter points, we're going to move them out to eighth points, possibly tenth points. We're going to move them out so you transfer the weight of the glass from here closer to the vertical, faster to the vertical. You're not maintaining an unsupported, you're reducing the unsupported space here by putting the setting blocks closer to the verticals, transferring the weight quicker to the vertical. And when you do something like that, that needs to be called out in the shop drawings. Most people in the field are going to assume that setting blocks are going to go at quarter points. And unless they go someplace, if they go someplace else, that needs to be clearly called out in the shop drawings. So you can see here, there's a rector's node listed right here. It says locate setting blocks at one eighth points. There's an asterisk here calling out for these lights of glass to make sure they follow this note. So the setting blocks are not going to be at quarter points. We're following the note here and we're going to put those at eighth point. And the problem is if they put them at quarter points, this horizontal member could over deflect and break the light of glass down here. So that's why making sure those setting blocks are the correct place is so important. That is all we have time for in this video. If you'd like to watch more of our 101 video series, subscribe to our YouTube channel, Conair Company Inc.